All right, we've got a lot to cover in this lesson, so let's not keep it waiting. Looking at this example, it says create a year-long budget checkoff matrix that keeps track of the following household expenses and when they are due. So here you've got a variety of different household expenses and how often they happen. And it's just asking you to check off when each of these is going to happen so you can get an idea of where your heavy bill months are and where your lighter month bills are. So looking at the first, I'm going to do the first two at a time because as I said, we've got a lot to cover. Mortgage and utilities are both monthly. So when they say budget checkoff, they letter, literally mean checkoff. So because it's monthly, I'm going to put a check mark in every single month. The next one is sanitation and it's quarterly. So quarterly means every three months. Doesn't necessarily matter which month that I start in, but I have to be consistent with it. So notice here that two months I don't pay, the third month I pay. Two months I don't pay, the third month I pay. Two months I don't pay, third month I pay, and so on through the month. I can't put that it was in January and March and then nothing until August and then in December. It has to be consistent quarterly. Insurance is semi-annually. It doesn't state the month. I'm just going to say that it happened in January and June. Again, same kind of January and, I apologize, July. Because again, I need to be consistent. So one, two, three, four, five months I don't pay, and then I pay. One, two, three, four, five months I don't pay, and then I pay. Internet is semi-annually also. So the same as as insurance, so I'm going to go ahead and click those in the same month for consistency's sake. The next one we have is food and it's monthly, so I'm going to go down here to food and I'm sorry I had to move these over a little bit so they're not in order like they were, but I needed to fit them on the screen. So that's monthly. Vet expenses are semi-annually, and let's say those are in June and December. Internet is also semi-annually. We've got that one. And insurance, semi-annually. Landline is monthly, and cell phone is monthly. So we're going to go ahead and do both of those at the same time. Go ahead and check each month here. Lawn and garden are April through September only. So I'm only going to mark May, April, May, June, July, August, September, and not the other months. Snow removal is in November, January, and March only. And then child care is every other month beginning in February. So starting with February, skip March, go to April, go to June, August, October, and December. And there is our budget checkoff matrix. When setting up a budget, it's important to understand the meaning of the terms. So it's asking you here basically to identify the difference between bi-monthly and semi-monthly because you don't want to put two checks in a box that you should have only had one in every other month. So breaking it down, the word buy is two. So when I have buy monthly, it's every two months or every other month. Whereas if I have semi-monthly, semi is half, so every half a month would be twice per month. So it's going to be important that we identify the differences between those two. Second one, Jeff's budget monthly budget allows the following household and it creates this pie chart. So basically it says he used a software program to construct the pie chart to show his percentages. 
How do the category percentages affect the construction of the chart? Well, we need to find out, remember that when I'm talking about a circle, I'm looking at 360 degrees. So what this program does is does it based on the number of degrees, not the percent. So we have to convert them. So the first one, and I'm going to be doing a lot of abbreviating here, is household. 40% or 0 0.40 times 360 is going to give me 144 degrees. And you can see here that this is, well, about here is 90, and then it's another 54 on that. So it is indeed 144 degrees. Now I'm going to go ahead with each one of the other fields and do the same thing. 0.25 times the same 360 is going to be 90 degrees. And if you look at education, it does look pretty much like a right angle there. Transportation is 15% of the 360 or 54%. Health is 5%, so 0 0.05 times the 360, or 18%. I'm going to move over here. Savings is 10% times the 360, or 36 degrees, and miscellaneous is 5%, which is the 0 0.05 times 360, which again is 18 degrees. And that is how the chart is configured. For the you do, it says Martha budgets X percent of her monthly income for rent. Express the measure of the central angle for the pie chart sector that represents Martha's rental budget. Now, it's return. It's showing you a term of central angle. Remember, central angle is from the center of the pie chart out to the edge. So in this, the rent is going to be x, which if that was, say, 40% as it was, and then we divide it by 100 to get that as a decimal, and then I multiplied it by 360 degrees to get my value for my central angle. Okay, number three, it says Kate and Paul budget $800 per month for transportation as cho shown in the pie chart. What information can we conclude about the pie chart? So we can't really have a discussion here like I would in the classroom. So I'm going to just kind of identify some of the things that in the past in classrooms we have identified. So the first thing would be here that looking at, say, parking, and looks like maybe repairs look like they might be about the same percentage. I can tell here that fuel is my greatest cost for my car. And it looks like car washes are my lowest cost for my car. Some other things people realized is that repairs seem to be about half as much as fuel. So here, repairs, two times the repairs would give me my fuel cost. And I'd like for you to just kind of take a second and just see if there's any other things that you can observe from this. If you have any questions on this, you're welcome to email me. Okay, based on the information, knowing the central angle for the fuel sector is 90 degrees, what information can be determined? Well, we know that one-fourth of the budget is for fuel. And we identified that repairs was half of that, so one-eighth of the budget was for repairs. Those are just a couple of things. Let's see if you can identify any others, and again, you're welcome to email me your answers. 
Example four, construct a bar graph using the information. So the first thing that we're going to have to do here is we're going to be creating a bar, a bar graph just down below here. I know many of you have already created one in the past. So let's just go to kind of go through this quickly. The first thing I have to do is total out all of my months so I know how far, how high my bar will be. So January is 230. February is 120, March is 480. How am I getting this? I'm simply adding down. April is 440, May is 50, June is 590, July is 250, August is 440 again, September $1,100. That looks like it's a high month. October 120, November 30, and December is 870. So now I need to go ahead and break this up and create the bars. Well, the first one, it says that January is 230. So looking at this, 230 falls maybe about right above that 200. And I'm going to put that right above January. The next one is 120 and it's February. So it's actually about $100 less. It's way below here. And there's my February. March is 480. So it's coming up probably somewhere around here. That might be a teeny bit high, but that would be about the area. And yeah, it might be a teeny bit high, but not too much. So we'll just kind of create it there. April is 440, so it's just shy of that 480 that March was. It's just underneath it. And there's April. May is only $50, so it's just going to be a little guy. He's about one fourth of the way up to 200, so it's just a very small amount. June is 590, which if I come across here, it brings me right below that 600 mark, a little bit higher than those others there at 440 and 480. So there's June. July is at 250, so I'm looking at probably about there. August is 440. So it's going to come a little bit beyond. And if I remember right, back in April, I had 440. So it's going to be about the same. Actually, it should be exactly the same height as what April was. September was my really big month. So that was where it was really expensive. October is 120, so it's just a little guy, but a little bit bigger, obviously, than the $50, the $50 month. November was 30, so it is the smallest of them all. It's going to be almost just a little blurb here. And then December was 870, which would come up to somewhere about there. And here is our bar graph. Okay, on the check your understanding, it says, at what amount would the horizon align be drawn to represent the average monthly budget to the nearest dollar? So to be able to do that, I need to be able to add all of the values together. So looking back at the example, I'm adding all 12 values together, and I get a total of 4,720. Now remember, we're looking for the average, the monthly average, so we're going to divide that by 12. And when we do that, we end up at $393. So what it's saying here is that the average cost, if I break this up into each individual month, it's going to be right below that $400 mark. So my horizontal line 
falls right in there. And so what this allows me to do is it allows me to prepare for the future. 